today, I will be covering several aspects on HPCC Google Cloud Platform as well as the uh, Google Anthos components. Uh, I will be going into some technical details, so definitely feel free to ask any questions. There are also several GitHub repositories that are linked uh, for the audience, so you could follow along with the presentation. The areas I will be covering on the Google Cloud Platform are the Google Kubernetes Engine, HPCC Test, GKE Features, and finally, the majority of the presentation will cover Google Anthos. So let's get into it. Google Kubernetes Engine has many features and benefits. Some of the features it has are Kubernetes CLI support, load balancing and auto scaling, cost efficiency, virtually no downtime, and when compared to the competition, it has almost 50 times more nodes per cluster. Users also benefit from the Google Cloud Platform features such as Anthos, App Engine, monitoring, and logging. However, features like Anthos do require you to have billing enabled, but lucky for us, Google does offer $300 free credit for you to test and mess around with all of their features, and that was enough for us over this internship to use. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over to the poll question first. Uh, have any of you tried the native HPCC cloud solutions? Please leave your responses below. And I'll cover what the HPCC native cloud development is. So the HPCC system's native cloud was implemented with version 7.8.0 of the HPCC platform. Because it is a recently introduced feature, it is a relatively unknown yet constantly evolving field for HPCC systems. Previous methods of deploying HPCC systems were through on-premise virtual machines. However, deploying the, to the cloud now is m a much easier process, and you can find more information on cloud development through the HPCC systems wiki. The link is provided on the slide, and you can see it below in the attachments and links. So I did, in fact, create a few shell scripts in the repository, or in a repository, and you can also see that in the attachments and links. If you want to play around with the HPCC systems, be sure to bookmark this page and follow the instructions on the readme. So we did, in fact, perform a few tests on the HPCC platform for Google Kubernetes, and these range from basic to advanced tests. The first test that we did run was the ECL playground samples, and the results came back with a 100% success rate. I also ran tests from the ECL Watch data tutorial, which was provided by the Boko Raton documentation team. We were able to complete most of the tutorial, but some functions were not supported. For example, spraying uh, landing zones as well as publishing queries through the ECL browser are not supported, and there might be support in the future, but that depends on the development team. We also ran um, a series of advanced tests called regression tests on Google Kubernetes, and it went with as well as it could have with expected results. There were a few failures and errors which were to be expected and the development team is currently working out all the kinks. So now I'll be covering one of Google Kubernetes features, which is their autoscaler. The GKE cluster autoscaler automatically resizes the number of nodes per a given node pool. The resize is based on the demands of the workload, which is triggered by constraints set by the user. In order to use Cluster Autoscaler, uh, enable Cluster Autoscaling and set the minimum and maximum number of nodes per node pool, and the rest will be automatically taken care of. Cluster Autoscaler is very useful because instead of manually removing, adding, or over-provisioning node pools, 
Uh, it performs these tasks automatically, mitigating errors and cost resource overruns. Here is a different type of auto-scaling. These are vertical and horizontal auto-scaling that applies to the pods individually. So Google's horizontal auto-scaler works in different stages. First, the horizontal auto-scaler checks metrics and usage to see if it has met the set threshold. This is usually set by Google. Next, it changes the number of replicas. It is important to note that replicas are identical pods. And finally, Google Horizontal Autoscaler deploys these changes from the set threshold, or deploys these changes from the um, from the automatic uh, sort of recommendations that Google makes and scales the number of pods. Google's vertical autoscaler works quite similarly to the horizontal autoscaler except instead of increasing the number of pods, it increases the amount of CPU and memory per pod. The vertical autoscaler can be configured to only give recommendations or to make automatic changes to CPU and memory requests, which is what most people opt to do, because it is, in fact, more accurate than what we typically think are required or resources are required. This benefits HPCC systems because under high traffic, Roxy and ECL Watch will face resource issues, and vertical and horizontal autoscaling will mitigate these problems. What is Google Anthos? Anthos is a modern application management platform that provides a consistent development and operations experience for cloud and on-premise resources. Google Anthos allows users to utilize other cloud resources such as Azure, Amazon, or even on-premise resources to take, while taking advantage of a singular advanced cloud environment. Anthos, Anthos comes with a plethora of components to help users with application needs. They are all highly customizable and tailored to specific needs. And here is a list of some of the components that Anthos has. And there are a lot more in this chart. And this is an entire chart for all the Anthos components. This diagram depicts what it looks like using the multi-cloud. You can have three types of clusters, GKE, external, and on-prem clusters, which are all being seamlessly controlled by a singular entity, which is Anthos. It is essentially a management system for the cloud. I've listed a few multi-cloud examples for HPCC systems. First, HPCC systems can function on multiple clouds in such a way that one cluster can be set for production another for testing, and a final cluster for development. Number two, this is an existing example, and this is shown on Azure. So HPCC systems takes the majority of the HPCC pods in one cluster, four pods in another cluster, and the third and final cluster is for ECL Watch service list. How it works. All clusters will generally stay in the same cloud, but clusters could also theoretically be in different clouds, but the performance may be uh, impacted. To set up Anthos, I created a few PowerShell scripts to help users through the entire process. It is a little complicated, so running these scripts will definitely help you manage your Anthos projects. In order to use these scripts, please visit the link in the presentation and follow the README. In this exercise, we will be registering existing Kubernetes clusters. For HPCC systems, 
I was only able to register AKS, EKS, and GKE clusters, but it is also possible to register on-premise clusters. But time constraints prevented me from taking full advantage of that feature. For the future, though, HPCC systems can take advantage of existing data center infrastructure to host its own clusters. So we could find a usage for the Boko Raton data center to host our own Kubernetes clusters. But for the clusters I was able to register, I was provided access to all Anthos components, which includes ingress, config management, and cloud run. Anthos config management is a service which allows you to create a common configuration across all of your infrastructure, including custom policies, and apply it to both on-premises and across clouds. Anthos Config Management evaluates changes and rolls them out to all Kubernetes clusters so that your desired state is always reflected. The default repository structure for a structured, uh, for a structured repository, there, there are two types of repositories, unstructured and structured. We'll, we'll be covering structured repositories since usually it's easier to do it that way. But it usually consists of four folders. And these are the cluster, cluster registry, namespace, and system folders. The cluster registry, or the cluster directory, contains configs that pertain to the entire cluster rather than namespaces. The cluster registry is an optional folder that contains configs for cluster selectors. And cluster selectors determine which configs apply to which clusters. The namespace directory contains configs for namespaces and namespace scoped objects. A namespace is basically a virtual cluster inside of your original Kubernetes cluster. You could have multiples of these namespaces in your cluster. And finally, the system directory contains configs for the operator. Anthos Config Management Dashboard helps you automate policy and security at scale in hybrid cloud and on-premises container environments through the Cloud Console. Anthos Config Management is a simple way to implement configurations through code. It is set up to use the config management.yaml file. This tells Anthos which repository, branch, and policy directory to follow. From there, users can access the dashboard to check basic information like status, version, latest commit, etc. And all clusters are, in fact, synced, as you can see from the image above. They're all being uh, controlled through Anthos. On, on this slide, we will be creating an example namespace and adding FluentD Elasticsearch to all clusters. The code for the HPCC config management is also inside the links and attachments uh, folder. You can bookmark this repository if you intend to use it yourself, and I recommend you use this. Step one, create the namespace if it does not exist. Step two, create the cluster selector for the checkout namespace and utilize the selector from the namespace.yaml file. And that's all it takes to, um, that's all it takes to create a, a new namespace. This config file installs the daemon set image FluentD for all managed Kubernetes clusters. Now, every time that Kubernetes nodes scale up, each new node will contain a FluentD Elasticsearch pod. What is a service mesh? A service mesh is essentially an infrastructure layer that enables managed, observable, and secure communications across all your services. It, it is made up of Many, it, it's a microservice structure and helps you sort of manage all of your requests and all of your internet traffic. 
What is Istio? Istio is a powerful and highly configurable open source service mesh platform, which features many tools and services that enables applications to follow industry best practices. You can install Istio by running the install Istio PowerShell script from the HPCC Anthos setup GitHub. Once you have Istio installed, you should verify by using the command kube control get pod dash n Istio system. This is shown on the image to the left. This is basically telling Kubernetes to list all pods from the Istio system namespace. After installing HPCC cluster, check if Istio is working properly by listing the pods. If you see two out of the two in the ready column, your Istio setup was successful. And you can see that in the image to the right. The reason why there are two containers to a pod is as a result of Istio sidecar. Istio sidecar is basically logs information from this, the running process. And Istio sidecar does require one container to monitor each process. So therefore, one container goes to the service, and the other one goes to monitoring that said service. However, there are some unintended consequences. Since Istio sidecar is always on, when the main process finishes, the job will will always be running. We have opened a JIRA in, ho in hopes of creating a workaround. This problem is an issue that is fundamentally incorrect with Kubernetes. There are talks to fix this bug in Kubernetes 1.19, but even that is quite uncertain. Istio Ingress Gateway is a gateway network management system that defines rules for routing external HTTP, TCP traffic to services in, in the Kubernetes cluster. It provides more tools and functionalities for routing when compared to the basic load balancer. An example usage for Ingress Gateway is routing 20% of all requests to a new version while keeping 80% of requests on a stable version. The benefits of Ingress Gateway are seen in its ability to control every aspect of internet traffic. You can control security, authorization, and networking to different versions. It also has very competitive response times, making it one of the best gateway management systems on the market. And in the image to the right, you can see this is a setup for the ingressgateway.yaml. This is configured through your config management. A very hot topic when discussing cloud platforms are its own logging capabilities. The Google Cloud Platform certainly does not disappoint. There are a wide variety of native in-house Google Kubernetes logging tools available to users. Anthos adds upon this by allowing a more detailed third-party metrics and graphs to be used. But if third-party solutions are not enough, you can also opt to create your own graphs and charts through the Google Console UI. The GKE logging and monitoring dashboard provides very detailed information on specific services inside GKE. Each service can therefore be expanded and you can view uh, logs, graphs, and errors. But this only works on GKE clusters. Google provides a vast array of options on monitoring GKE clusters. One of the more popular ways is through Anthos Service Mesh. In Anthos Service Mesh, you are not limited by the default listed services. You can choose your own services to monitor. But there are a few steps you have to take to monitor a custom service. First, from the Google Cloud Console, select Monitoring and Service. Next, select Define Service. Third, 
select any entry out of the list. For this example, I selected ECL services. After that, I submitted the service. And once you navigate to your Anthos service mesh dashboard, you can see the ECL services appear. From this point, you can set your own service level objectives for any service you like. Being able to set your own metrics on any service greatly benefits the development of HPCC-related software. In order to monitor my non-GKE clusters, I use third-party services. To utilize third-party services such as Grafana and Kali to monitor non-native clusters, users must define and apply configurations for each service. For example, you have, adding Grafana requires you to create a Grafana underscore gateway .yaml file. You, have, you also have to apply virtual services for each third-party solution. Solutions such as Grafana and Kiali utilize Prometheus metrics to provide seamless Google Anthos API integration for multi-cloud clusters. Prometheus is a monitoring tool often used with Kubernetes. It can be toggled on and off and will show detailed information on your clusters. It provides metrics to other tools. It is also important to note that we did not install any extra features. Prometheus, Kiali, and Grafana were all installed with Istio and come with Istio. Here is what Kiali looks like when monitoring non-GKE HPCC clusters. In the left image, there are many tabs all dealing with monitoring and logging to aid developers. And in the right image, you can see something quite special. It, dis it is displaying each HPCC platform service and how it relates to each other. It is unbelievably helpful to know when debugging where an error occurs and originates from. It also simplifies an otherwise complicated setup. There is no lack of monitoring and logging ability on the Google Cloud Platform. In fact, that is one of its strengths. Here's my takeaway. Some things I learned while partaking on this project was that Anthos is a trend. That is, that's not to say that it does not have promise. I personally believe that within a few years, Anthos will have matured enough to become the most mainstream, or if not, one of the most mainstream cluster management systems. In the future, we may evaluate and compare other technologies such as Azure Stack, AWS Outpost, and Rancher to see which one fits HPCC the best. I also learned that Google is responsible for Kubernetes. This gives Google Kubernetes Engine home advantage when compared to other Kubernetes services. Google will always be the first to implement newer features and versions of Kubernetes, which will definitely benefit GKE users. I have one final quick poll. Do you use Kubernetes management systems in your work? Please respond at the, to the right of the screen. And here are some of the useful links that we have. They're also featured inside the attachments and links. I want to wrap this presentation up with a final thank you. Thank you uh, to my mentor, Xiaoming, or my mentor, Xiaoming, Gaji, and thank you, Lorraine, and the rest of the team for your unwavering support, patience, and guidance as I worked on this project. It truly means a lot to me, and when I when I say I, I it really does mean a lot to me, and I'm really grateful for this opportunity. Thank you all. It's been an amazing journey. Thank you, Jeff. That was a great presentation. Uh, for everyone listening out there, um, our cloud native platform is ongoing development uh, through into 2021. And Jeff and some of the other interns on our program have been pretty much early adopters of our cloud native platform, testing things often uh, before some of the developers have even looked at them themselves either. So there are a couple of things I did just want to mention there. I'd like to thank Jeff for his hard work. This is a project that he suggested himself. 
it wasn't one of our list. So I'd like to thank him for suggesting the project and for working so hard and diligently uh, with Charming Wang on, on it and for finding some really great things to feed back to the development team, raising the issues that he's raised and also providing us with um, some ideas of, of, of how to go about doing what he's doing. Um, I'd also like to say that since it is a piece of ongoing development, there are some things that aren't quite there yet, but that are coming. So things, for example, like getting the data onto um, the, the cluster and also persisting that data. And those things will be coming in the next version, 7.12, at some point. And there will also be more information available. I know there is certainly a blog in the works from Gavin Halliday um, about persisting data. So look out for those blogs coming. Um, and, uh, and hopefully some of these things that aren't quite there yet will be there shortly. I'd like to pass it over to you now, Jessica, for the polls and the questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So, Jeff, will you take a moment to look at the questions from the audience? And this is also a wonderful time for our audience if you have questions for Jeff to submit those. Um, so the first poll question was, have you tried the native HDCC systems cloud solution? 62% said yes and 37% said no. So hopefully you've got some good instruction on how to get started if you'd like to. This has been a, a very informative presentation. All right. Jeff, are you ready for your questions? Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. So our first one is, how do you load data files since there's no landing zone or spray support? So you have to load your data files through the data shared directory. So it has to be staged onto your NFS server in the folder var lib HPCC systems HPCC data. And then from there, you have to use ECL code to import the data to HPCC systems. I, it might change in 7.12, but that is what we currently have to do. All right, great. Um, and here's a good question. Is Google Anthos free to use? No, Google Anthos is not free to use. You have to enable billing, but you do have $300 free trial credit. You can use that to your advantage. All right, great. All right, um, can Google Anthos be installed on a local environment? No. Uh, as far as I know, Google Anthos cannot be installed on a local environment. Great, perfect. Okay, here's another one. Um, what type of persistent volume uh, tested on Google Cloud? We tested the NFS server for um, Google Cloud, and there are other persistent volumes, but that is for those are for other clouds. All right, great. All right, here's, here's one last question. Um, what is the difference between the legacy HPCC systems cloud and the HPCC systems native cloud? So the legacy HPCC systems cloud required you to use virtual machines to run and start up, while the new one, you can use your NFS server to start it up on virtually or any, any file storage server to start it up on any cloud platform it is made a lot easier. All right, great. Let's see. Um, I'm going to take a moment, Jeff, and go through your last poll question. And if anyone else has an additional question for Jeff, this is a great time to uh, send it in. All right. So the question is, do you use Kubernetes management system in your work? And 75% said yes. So that's a pretty significant number. And 25 said that they don't use it yet. So um, that's very good information. All right. Let's take a quick look. All right. I think that's all that we have for the moment. So Jeff, this is a really informative presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.